Hey, what's going on? Mark here for Unoriginal Noobs. Here in another Resident Rise tutorial installment. And in these next few parts, I'm going to be going over Big Reactors, which is a huge mod in Resident Rise. Except the mod size itself is actually quite small, but the way the mod is put together and how it works mechanically with how many items it actually adds to the game, it is very, very cool. And just to show you the size of this mod, if I open up the NEI tab and have all the big reactor items showing, look how few items there are. If I go to other mods, like say, oh, whoa, whoa, caps lock, <laughs> uh, thermal expansion. I mean, there are multiple pages of thermal expansion items. Now, be in mind, this is floors and stuff. But if we go to big reactors, big reactors, big reactors, there's only five rows of items. And the mod itself is very extensive, very in-depth, and there's a whole lot of room and kind of stuff you can do with the mod. Okay, so let's get right into the mod, I guess you could say. Let's get right into it. So the mod only adds one block to the world, one ore, this yellow right ore. And this yellow right ore will be used to craft up your initial component parts along with the fuel you will use for your reactors. Now, because this is a Resonant Rise mod tutorial, and not just the mod by itself, what you can actually do, because this is in Resonant Rise, is you use yellow right ore to fuel your reactors. However, you need to mine up this ore to fuel. Well, there's a little trick. Because this is in Res Resonant Rise, oh, hello chicken, you're going to, <laughs> okay. Because this is in Resonant Rise, there is magical crops and there is mine chem. So what you can actually do is you can have uranium magical crops, take those essence, turn them into a uranium ore from mine chem, and when you pulverize this, you actually get yellow right dust, which you can smelt into the ingot, which is used as fuel for the reactor. So you can essentially and exactly, pretty much literally, grow your fuel from magical crops, which makes it much easier because then you can have higher tier, or not higher tier, but you can have reactors that produce more power and have a higher fuel burn up rate. I don't have to worry so much about running out of fuel because you're growing it. So that's pretty cool, actually. Let's get right into it. The orange box here, you can see, is going to be all the big reactors, so the normal reactor parts, and then the purple box. Okay, these are actually the big reactor essentials, so you're going to need all of these on a on a normal big reactor. These are the essential blocks, and then these ones are the, you could say, I don't know, the non-essentials, you could say. Now, this one is kind of, or, no, okay. These are the non-essential blocks, the optional blocks. So that's what I'm looking for, the optional blocks. Anyway, let's get right into it. So these are kind of fairly self-explanatory and I'll kind of just go over all of them. So the reactor casing is pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to use it for your, you absolutely need it for the casing of your reactor. So the, the edges, so the corner pieces of your reactor, not the faces, but all the corner pieces, all of them have to be made of, out of reactor casing. You can't use any other block for that. Next up, you have your reactor controller. This is where you're gonna monitor your reactor's energy levels, the heat levels, the fuel levels, and whether or not you can turn your reactor on or not, on or off or not. And if you have a actively cooled reactor, which I'll explain what it is later, don't worry about what it is now, but if you have an actively cooled reactor, this is where you'll monitor those levels as well. Here you have reactor glass. Now this serves no functional purpose other than to give your reactor some aesthetic value, because with that reactor glass, you can see into your reactor to your fuel rods and your coolants, and it kind of shows it off a little bit more. This is non-essential. You don't need reactor glass. You can use reactor casing for the entire thing. You do not need reactor glass. It's just purely aesthetical. Next up, we have reactor access ports. And what you're going to be using these for is if we open it up here, you can see there are four options to eject fuel or to eject waste. And then there is inlet mode or outlet mode. So in inlet mode by default, if you have a pipe connected to this um, access port this access port will only let you put fuel into it it won't take fuel out so if you have say oh let's say let's put a pipe a uh, pipe we'll see so i don't know if they have they must have this kind of oh, okay yeah here so we have stone transport pipes now stone transport pipes they will transport items in or out they don't have a set direction of which way they will transport items so what this reactor access port will do is if it is in an inlet mode, it will only allow fuel to be going into it. It won't let fuel come out of it. Whereas if it is in outlet mode, it will now put fuel out and won't let you put fuel into it. So you can have two of these on your reactor if you want. You can have one putting fuel in, one taking fuel out, or you can just kind of do it manually. Doesn't really matter. 
and then you can set these to just eject ex excess waste so if this thing fills up it will just dump it and you'll kind of never see it again we just type in big reactors here so we can get back to the mod that we are actually on there we go perfect all right these eulorium fuel rods you will need these and what these do is you'll put them in your reactor and they will depending on how many of them you have in your reactor that will determine how much fuel you can put in your reactor don't worry about building the reactor in this episode because I'm not going to be going over how to build it in this episode. That'll be a little bit later episode and I'll be going over efficiency of reactors when not. Anyway, the Elorium fuel rod, all you have to know about it is it acts as a light source actually in case anyone didn't know because I didn't know at first. It acts as a light source to keep the inside of your reactor lit up so mobs don't spawn and depending on how many of them you have, it determines how much fuel you can store in your reactor. Okay, next up we have the reactor control rod. And it looks like a casing until you look on the top, <laughs> you can see the little white symbol. And if you right click on it, you can see you can name them. I don't, you don't need to name them. I don't know why you need to name them. I'm assuming it might be for if you use a computer port. Um, I'll go over that a little bit later. But I haven't really found a purpose to name them yet. Anyway, you have to put for every Eulorium fuel rod vertical column you have in your reactor, you're going to need one reactor control rod per column of fuel rods you have. And all these do is they control how much fuel gets consumed. So at 0%, that means the control rod is not affecting your reactor at all. The fuel rod is lowered 0%, so it's not lowered at all. Meaning your reactor is going to be consuming the fuel at its maximum rate. Whereas if you put the fuel rod all the way down to 100%, that means the reactor control rod is 100% effective, you could say. Meaning it's going to take your fuel burn up rate or fuel consumption rate to zero meaning it is going to be it, it's basically it's effectively shutting off your reactor the only reason you would use this is if you if you have fuel but you're you don't need all the fuel that your reactor is producing because these reactors can produce a lot of fuel so if you're producing say a thousand redstone flux per tick but you're only using 500 redstone flux per tick you can put this thing to 50 percent right like this and then your reactor will now only produce 500 rf per tick just the right amount that you need so it's just to control the fuel consumption in your reactor and the power output of your reactor they're actually very very helpful last but not least we have the red <laughs> red zone the reactor power tap and obviously this is really important because this is the only way you can actually get power out of your reactor you just need one of these and you can have multiple on your reactor you can have 20 of them on your reactor it's just to get power outside of your reactor all right, and oh, sorry, the last thing I'll say, the only reason I think you need multiple versions or multiple reactor power taps is say, for example, redstone energy conduit. Um, they can only, for their connections, each redstone energy conduit can only flow through 10,000 RF per tick through their connections. So if your reactor is producing 50,000 RF per tick and you have a whole bunch of mining lasers and you need that, you need that power, you can have five of these and a five R or redstone flux uh, or redstone flux geez redstone energy conduit connections and then you'll be getting 50,000 RF per tick rather than just 10,000 with one of them that's the only reason you would need more than one of these reactor power taps okay so let's get on to the optional versions or the optional <laughs> items you could say add-ons for your reactor so first off we have the red net port and what the red net port is it allows you to control your reactor through the red net mod or through red net capabilities so if you right click on it, it will bring up a kind of familiar RedNet accessory. And I haven't um, played around with RedNet too much, but I know that there are different colored lines that you can use with RedNet. So say you have a white line in your RedNet control system or in your RedNet network, and you want this white line to control whether the actor turns on or off or not. Well, you can come over to the right here and these are all the possible settings you can, or settings and variables you can access with RedNet. So say you want the white line to control the reactor toggle, so on or off. You can click this and then put it into the box here. And now your white line will be controlling the reactor level. So it will basically be if the reactor is on, then it will kind of output a level or a pulse. And then the white line for your red net will be, oh, geez. Oh, sorry, I had to set to commit. Make sure whenever you change something, you press commit to it to save the setting it should be say rather than commit i don't know why i put commit but now your white line will be if the reactor is on or off or not so if you want to automatically 
turn your reactor off. Say when your reactor gets full of energy, you want it to automatically turn off. You could have a line that's white, and then in your purple line, you can say you can put a output energy amount. So if we go over here, oops, output energy amount, it should, okay, interesting. I guess it's different. Okay, it's a little bit different, I guess. But then you could say you could output the energy amount percentage, and when it gets over a certain percentage, you can have it going into the white line right here to turn the reactor off. So that's just one use for it. Next up, we have the reactor computer port. Now, this gives you probably the most control over your reactor over any block. I'll link in the description a wiki page that has all the possible, oh, you could say, variables, I guess. All the possible variables for a computer craft, the computer craft coding that you'll need for the reactor is actually very simple. And the computer port gives you the ultimate control over reactor and the ultimate amount of information you could ever use. More than the red net port and more than the redstone port over there. Much more. Next up, we have a reactor coolant port. Now this is optional for reactors, but needed for turbines. And all you have to know is when you place this on your reactor, if you are just using the reactor and not turbines, you do not want to put this on. This will completely mess up your reactor because once you add this to reactor, to your reactor, it immediately stops producing power and instead produces, produces steam. So unless you're using turbines, do not, I repeat, do not put this on your reactor or it will not produce any power. And this changes your reactor from a passive cooling to a active cooling. And this is input to input water. And then you need to output right here. So you just right click to change the mode. So if it is input, you input water in there and then it heats up the water. And then in output mode, in an, you'll need two of these and then it will output steam, which you'll use in turbines. I'll go over that a little bit more extensively in a later episode. Just you, you don't want to put this on the reactor if you want to use that reactor for power. You only need it for turbines. Last not, but not least, we have the reactor redstone port. And this gives you some redstone functionality and capabilities for your reactor. So if we right click on it, you can see we have the exact same settings that we had in that one, except this one just outputs redstone signals. So if you want to control the level of your reactor, you can have two of these. One of them you could set to output energy percentage. So you can set it to active, say you're, you want it to be active when, you're, when your reactor is above 90%. So once your reactor gets above, above 90% energy, it will output a signal. And then you can have another one. So now this is outputting a signal. And then you can have another one that toggles or not whether the reactor is on or off, on or off, or on or not. So you can set from signal. So when it receives a signal, then it will turn off the reactor so that when this is above 90%, it outputs a signal to go into another one that is set to turn the reactor off when it is above 90%. And then you have a fully automated reactor that won't waste any fuel because it turns itself off. So that's pretty cool. All right. And to finish off this episode, we'll go into cooling techniques that you can use for your reactor. And what cooling does is it lowers the temperature of your reactor, which reduces the burn up rate of your fuel, which also increases the efficiency and the energy output of your reactor. So having good cooling will it, it dramatically, I can't stress that enough, dramatically increases the amount of power output you have. And you can use liquid or solid blocks. So you can either and to cool it, they have to be touching the fuel rods to be cooling. That's the only way they'll actually cool. So the first one is you can have air. You can have none of these and just have air cooling, which is the least efficient. You won't get much. You, it's air cooling. It's, it's very inefficient cooling. And your reactor will heat up very, very much and it'll become very hot and won't produce a nearly at efficient um, power. Then your three first options are solid blocks. So you can have iron, gold, and diamond, as you can see. And you have to make sure, that, once again, these are actually touching the fuel rods. And then what that will do is these will absorb some of the heat and it will make your reactor a little bit more efficient. I haven't actually tested these. However, I'm sure it, it'll be the iron is the is the least out of the solid, then gold is better, and then diamond being the best out of these solid blocks. And once again, you just gotta make sure that they're touching their that they're touching the fuel rods, and that's also the same for the liquids. As for the liquids, you can use water and all the types of thermal expansion liquid, except for coal. You can't use liquid coal. <laughs> so you have water, and water is almost not even worth putting into your reactor. If you have it air-cooled, 
and you add in water, you're literally going to get like three more RF per tick. It's not even worth putting in water into your reactor. You may as well move on to something else. So you can use redstone flux, glowstone. Now you can use pyrotheum and I'm not sure how pyrotheum actually works. The wiki page said you can use any thermal expansion liquid and pyrotheum was on the list. Now pyrotheum's a hot liquid, so I don't know if it actually heats up your reactor more than actually cooling it, but it was on the list of liquids you can use to put into your reactor. Next up, ender. Liquid ender is will dramatically reduce the heat in your reactor and dramatically increase its efficiency and power output like crazy. If you are able to put liquid, in, liquid ender into your reactor, I highly suggest you do it. And then the last one, the ultimate cooler, the cryotheum. This stuff is crazy and you'll need a lot more of it because on the fuel rods, if you have a reactor that's say four tall, you just need to put the liquid on the very top layer because the liquid flows down to touch the rest of the fuel rods. Well, cryotheum doesn't do that. Cryotheum actually follows gravity. And if you put it up, if you put cryotheum up on a wall, say, so that there's air below it, cryotheum will actually fall down. Like, um, I don't know, it'll fall down and obey gravity and fall to the floor unless there's another cryotheum source block below it. So instead of just having to put liquid source blocks on your top layer of reactor having it flow down you need to fill your entire reactor with this cryotheum but if you do your reactor becomes crazy efficient it becomes so cool and you have such little fuel burn up rate and you produce so much power if you have it cooled with cryotheum all right so i think that's going to be it for this part and the next part i'll be going over the turbines and exactly what those blocks do uh regardless they're they're not too much different than the actual reactor parts they're just Basically, you just take these parts and you kind of, they're almost changing the tex tex texture and then putting it turbine on it instead of reactor. And then I'll also be showing you how to build a reactor, efficient setups, and how to kind of manage your reactor and build the turbine. I can't wait. I hope you learned something new. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.